Okay. All right, Leanne, thank you for that. Um, well, welcome everybody today. Uh, this is the fourth um, series of our webinars. Uh, those that have previously joined us have, uh, have had some very interesting sessions on our type composites, our rump, ABV composite, feet and legs composite, dairy strength composite. So they were the new traits that were introduced as part of the uh, April run. But today, um, given that we're only a week away from, uh, or a week and a half away from our next August release, uh, what we'd like to do is to demonstrate um, our new re newly released DataVat, uh, which has been launched this year. And uh, I know quite a few of you are actually using DataVat now, but what we'd like to do is um, show you really some what it does, uh, what it can do for you, and certainly uh, uh, how you can use it going forward. So, just to uh, welcome also, we've got Bruce Ronalds um, from ABS. Uh, so Bruce will be joining us. Uh, I'll be, uh, he's the business operations manager of ABS Australia. And uh, I'll be talking to Bruce about how he uses data that uh, almost on a daily basis, I think Bruce now, isn't it? Yeah, no, pretty much every day I'm logged in there just to uh, to look at bulls and look at different things that are going on and uh, making sure uh, the ABS bulls are, are either activated, deactivated, um, bull proofs, that sort of stuff. So that's no, good. Great. Good. Well, data vat, um, da what's data vat? Data vat. Uh, excuse is... me, Pete, just before you go on, can we just check that everyone can see your screen with data vat on it? Oh, okay. Right. Just um, to, uh, we should have the data vat opening screen. Ali, Ali's given us a thumb up. She can see it. Okay, good. Right, if you can't, right. you may need to double click on the screen to make it bigger. Okay, up the top just to maximise. So what's DataVat? Well, DataVat is your window into Australia's new central data repository or CDR. Uh, it is the source of all of our bull and cow information, uh, including their pedigree and proof. And uh, an amazing resource that covers all our local as well as overseas bulls and likewise all of our herd tested cows as well as the herds that are now genomically testing their females as well. So what DataVat is, it's a way of making uh, all of that information available to you online. Uh, it's a massive amount of information and it gives us the ability to regularly update it. So some things where we're actually updating weekly, uh, others fortnightly, and certainly our proofs now we're running monthly with the, the aim of running them every two weeks. So to get to DataVat, I think most people have found that, uh, you actually just um, go directly to the DataVat website at uat.datavat.com.au or you can do so through uh, through the data gene website so most people our opening menu so what i'll do is just take you through um, uh, what's contained in the opening menu so that's our opening dashboard uh, most people would generally go straight to the animal search function so that this is where what this is doing is is really setting the criteria that you wish to look for so all of our bulls, all of our cows are there. This is just allowing you to, to fine tune and pull out the animals you wish to see. Pete, do you want to just explain what's available without uh, log, setting up an, an account and logging in? That's right, yeah. What, uh, where we're at now is actually the public release. So this is what people would see just uh, as a non-logged user. Uh, but what we'll cover in another session is that uh, we also have access to people, um, particularly cow owners, herd owners, and bull owners, bull companies. They have an ability to log in and actually um, see information that's specific to them. But what, what this search function allows you is to look for individual animals or you can look for groups of animals. So if we start off, uh, up in the left hand corner here, uh, what you've got to work out, are you looking for a bull or are you looking for a cow? Because we do keep them, uh, they're all on the one database, but uh, um, it's important that you indicate what you're looking for at the time. Secondly, as we come across, you look at the ABV release. Uh, these are the public releases that we'll show here. 
So you've got the option of looking at the current proof run, which is the April 2020 run. And of course, that's about to be updated in a week and a half's time. Importantly too, what you need to be looking for, um, because it is a database selection, is the breed that you're looking for. So you have options. Uh, you can look, you can default it at all breeds if you're not sure of the animal you're looking for, or if you know particularly which breed you're looking for, you can actually select that breed and it just makes the sort process uh, a little bit quicker. So if we look uh, at the moment, we're, we're looking for bulls from the April 2020 run and Holstein. And what we've got below are the bulls that qualify. Uh, and you can, we, they're ranked in BPI order. So we've got our top bull at uh, 430. And there's a huge number of bulls that just cascade down from that 430. Now, importantly, the list that you'll look at, um, because we, we've left it open, is both genomic as well as proven. So uh, you, you can select for one or other, but um, the opening menu will actually give you the option to look for both genomic and proven bulls together. So most people uh, are generally interested in a particular bull. So to find that, you come across to the view section uh, and there's a little green eye, what I call a little green eye. You click on that eye and that will actually bring up the details of that particular bull. So in this case, uh, it's a, our top bull is a bull called Proceed and you'll see the proof run, 2020, April, and you'll see all the bull's particulars. So his semen code, his NASIS identity, uh, what we store as an internal number, his national ID, plus you'll see other identifiers and also the company that markets that bull. So th this is just giving you the details we're storing uh, on behalf of our and, and NASA's database. So what we see here is basically the proof information on that side. So we've got all of his the BPI, HWI, TWI, uh, and we've got all his production traits as well. So it's, it's interesting in this case, uh, if you look at um, this certain, and of course, workability in the middle and uh, confirmation traits on the right hand side. Now, you can open up certain parts of the menu. So if you look at records in progress, um, that actually tells us that he's got no daughters. So he's got no Australian daughters, nor has he got daughters in any other country. So he's a young genomic bull, and uh, we will look at another example, um, uh, not too far down the track where we can show you how that works. Now, one button, if you, if you use data that, one button that you'll find very, very useful up here on the left-hand side is a button called Compare Previous ABV. So if I click on that, so at the moment we're looking at his current, which is the April 2020. If I click on Compare, it brings up the last published release, which was December 2019. So you can see quite clearly uh, each trait and how it's moved from run to run. So you don't have to print the piece of paper. Uh, you then don't have to race off and remember what he was. This actually shows you the movement. In this case, the bull was very stable. He only went down one BPI point uh, and you'll see across, the, um, but he actually went up six production points. But it shows you that for every trait. And you will find that the proofs do move from run to run slightly, and that's just with the addition of more information. So that's a very, very useful button, compare previous proof. Now, like most things, uh, if, if you're actually looking to store that information, um, you can print what you see on the screen with print ABV, uh, and that will print just the proof page, or if you're wanting to print the entire um, set, which will include the indices graph plus his pedigree, you can press that button on the right hand side as well. Now, most people uh, 
if they're looking at the database, uh, you're actually looking for individual bulls or um, specific size. So again, make sure you've got the right proof run and the right breed. Now, the important two boxes here, you've got a box called ID, which you can enter those details if you wish. Uh, now, a lot of people aren't going to know, most of them are very specific numbers. Uh, and even the bull ID, um, if it's not a simple one. So that's where you can enter the ac exact details of the bull. Or if you're like me uh, and you know a short name or a common name, you actually enter that there as well. So I'll show you if we were to look at a bull like Christmas, Christmas in August. So because we've entered the exact bull code, there's only one option. So you can go straight to the bull, check, and of course you can then click on that eye to see more details on the bull. Now, if you're like most of us uh, and you're not too sure uh, what the bull exact bull code is, but you've got a fair idea, so let's say it's uh, the bull Perseus, the Holstein bull Perseus. So what we're looking for, that's not his exact code, but we're actually searching the database to come up with all the bulls that have got Perseus somewhere in their name. So if you look at all these, uh, they've all got Perseus. As, as it works out, the bull we're after is actually the top of the list. So that's a very, very useful option. Uh, and I think most people would tend to use that. Uh, even Bruce, you'd find with your bulls, most of them are numbered bulls. Um, you would find that that's, that's probably a preferred option, looking, searching for them by common name. Yeah, correct. Yeah, just using the, the, the name section is usually what I use um, all the time. Very rarely do I use the code. I said I'd off by heart. Now, uh, just a hint here, uh, if you were looking for Canyon David, so most of us know that Canyon David is a jersey, uh, was our number one jersey bull uh, back about a year and a half, two years ago. So if you type in Canyon David and you search for him and it says we can't find him, you go, well, hang on. But this is where you have to check your filters. So in that case, I haven't changed the breed filter to jersey. I look for him again and suddenly we can find him. So if you can't find a bull of interest, just make sure that you've, you've got all your breed filters sitting correctly because it won't find, uh, obviously won't find animals that um, aren't in that particular breed. So what, what we'll do now, uh, we'll actually, uh, I'll demonstrate with a couple of bulls that Bruce is very familiar with and we'll show you the power of the information that we actually store in DataVat. So what we'll start off, Bruce, we'll start off with MVP. Um, now you probably know his code, um, but like me, I know him as MVP. So I've put that in the middle box and what it's done is look at bulls in the database that have got MVP in their name. So one we know as a son, the other is actually the bull himself. So what we'll do is um, when you pull that up, Bruce, so what that basically gives you is all the information that you've entered or we've got stored on NASIS um, and we'll show you the particular details that, um, so is, um, what do you keep on, an eye on there, Bruce? You, you look at all the details and where they've moved, where they've changed? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, from run to run, um, I, I use the compare um, function uh, a lot of the time. Uh, for me, this is uh, critical in knowing uh, how bull has moved from run to run, whether it's from a PVV run or whether it's from uh, the main run. Um, I suppose the power of this for me is the fact of a bull might, well, particularly in this case, he's dropped back 21 points on his BPI. Um, that can be a lot of information uh, that's contributed to that, a lot of little small changes in the bull's proof. So just looking through and finding some key things that uh, the bull has moved on. He moved one ASI point down, um, but there's certainly some other traits that the bull has moved down on. Um, particularly with a bull like this, um, daughter numbers uh, are pretty critical. Um, 
and uh, certainly add, adding a lot of daughters from run to run can have an impact on the bull's proof. So for me, this just gives understanding to each of the traits that have moved. Um, and uh, rather than me always go back to data gen and say, why is this bull moved this, this amount of BPI points? Uh, what are the reasons behind that? And then coming back and saying it could be feed saved, it could be cell count, it could be ASI. Uh, I've got a pretty good picture uh, from run to run, whether it's a PV run or a, or a standard run, um, why the bull is actually adjusted. That's great. And, and particularly here, um, you can open up these menus. What it shows you is the amount of information we store. So in this case, MVP, we've just got over 1,700 daughters here in Australia, 203 herds. Uh, it shows you the herd with the two most numbers of daughters. But it also shows you where the, through Interbull, we're pulling in massive amounts of information from almost every other country around the world. So that's combined into this proof to give us what we see. So it's not just a domestic proof, Australian proof, it, it includes uh, everything. Hey, so then if we come... A Sorry? Hey, just before you go on, um, Bruce mentioned PBV runs. Would he only see those if he was logged in because they would be specific to the ball company? That's correct, yes. We're, we're, we're actually running the proofs monthly. Uh, the, the public, uh, we've only got three releases a year public, which are April, August and December. But Bruce, through his login or other companies through the login, um, Anthony at uh, uh, Genetics Australia, they can actually log in and see each run specific to their bulls. So it's, it's, it's quite a powerful uh, um, data set that they get to see each month. Now, if we look across, um, there'll be some information here that we find. So I've just clicked on the progeny button. Uh, and what it's doing is looking through the NASA's database and we've got three sons of MVP that are actually showing up as it, um, on the, our uh, NASA's database. So it gives you the details of those and then uh, you've also got the option to, uh, to drill down further into those. So that's, that's a useful summary. Pedigree, um, that's just the standard um, three generation pedigree and every animal that's got a, a green eye, you can actually click and go deeper into that information as well. I think Pete, Pete just to add there, it's very, uh, it's very useful information to actually look at the sire and the, and, um, and really drill into why a bull may move. Some this, sometimes a, a bull may not have actually any milking daughters here in Australia, yep. uh, but certainly the sire, uh, if you click in there and see the movements of the sire from run to run, uh, it can be pretty powerful to, to determine the change uh, and why that young sire has actually moved from run to run. Run to run, absolutely, yes. Importantly, um, or increasingly now, we've got a button which is the uh, genetics code. So that's actually the information that the, uh, the, bull, the bull company, so Bruce maintains that. So what that's telling you is the, uh, the, the particular status and we've got quite a few uh, genetic test codes. So that's worth looking at. In this case, it's confirming that he's an A2A2 bull. Uh, and we'll have a look at the next bull which will show us uh, a little bit more about his tests. Now, a button that, um, or a, a indices graph is actually a, a really, really useful um, visual representation of where we get the numbers from. So in MVP's case, he's 273 BPI, 187 health weighted and 306 type weighted. But where does he get that information from? So what we show you for each of the 13 traits here that go into the BPI, we actually show you the contribution that each one of those traits make to the BPI. So in this case, protein is contributing 161 points to the BPI. So if you look at a bull like MVP, uh, now just a point on milk, um, you'll see that he's minus 30. Uh, that's the contribution to the BPI. He does have a positive ABV, so his actual milk ABV is plus 302, uh, but that actually goes into the BPI formula as a negative. So milk is a negative, so you'll see that's why it goes that way. But it's, it's a very quick way, Bruce, of really showing you what the bull does well, but also cumulatively the things that um, he, he, you know, 
they all add up to a bigger number. So if you add all those, you'll actually get those um, individual numbers. And you'll see that not every bull's perfect, not every animal, there's things that you need to, you know, things that they do well and other things that you need to protect them on as well. So we'll just have another um, quick look and I'll show you. Um, um, so this time, Bruce, we're gonna look for, Geronimo. So he's been a bull that's, um, so again, it's picking up all the Geronimos. I've searched for him by, and likewise, similarly, what you'll see are all the details. Uh, and then his proof, and you've got that compare proof button again. Uh, what I find fascinating in this case is that um, we've got a young sire, Bruce, that hasn't got a milking daughter yet, and yet look at the number of sons. So it shows you how the industry, how quick it's moving. We've got a bull that hasn't even got a lactating daughter yet, and we're already picking up uh, seven of his sons that have been registered for NASAS. Now, what's interesting here, uh, I've gone to his genetic section, so you can probably describe that, Bruce. What's that telling us? So we, we've got A2, A2. Yeah, and uh, he's actually a pole carrier. So he's um, so he's a he's a big P, little P. So um, we can actually, uh, depending on the, the status of the bull, if he's a, a double P bull, he'll be, uh, uh, what's the code for that, Pete, from memory? Um, P... P-O-C. P-O-S. P-O-S for, for double pole. And in this case, the bull's uh, a single P bull. So a P-O-C. Right, and then if we look at the uh, the indices graph, um, what you'll see, and and you know straight away looking at that Bruce, it, it just says that the bull does a lot of things to the positive. So if you look at all the movement to the right, again, uh, like MVP, he's actually a, a plus ABV bull for milk, but that goes in as a negative contribution to the BPI. But if you look, he's just at um, a very high exceptional protein bull. And he, he does everything very well. Cell count, daughter fertility. So all of the, the movement to the right, all of those numbers add up to a, a bigger BPI, HWI and TWI. So not surprisingly, he's been one of the top ranked bulls for, uh, for quite a few runs now. So that's how you can look for individual bulls. Um, now, I'll show you a tool that um, some people may not have found. So we're back to the opening screen again. Uh, if we come across to the right-hand side, see where there's more filters. So I've just clicked down on that arrow. And what that's giving us is the ability to sort the database using more traits. So for instance, rather than have thousands of bulls, I'd like to see bulls that are 300 BPI or better. And because daughter fertility is important to me, I'd like a minimum of 110. And likewise type, uh, I want better than average type. And also I want better than average udders. And I'm gonna be pretty fussy, I want A282. So what I've done, I've just put in criteria uh, for that particular sort. I send the system off and it actually, data that finds the bulls that, so you'll see it's a slightly different ordered list now, but each of these bulls actually uh, tick all of the boxes above. So you can, you can, you can play with those filters. Obviously the tougher it is, the harder it is, um, the less bulls you'll see but you've got different options that you can include there um, to actually show you a short list of bulls. Now, once you get your short list, um, again, you don't have to remember them. You can actually print them uh, and it will print a summary or what you might find, uh, and for the people that use it regularly, you can export what's here. So you can actually export it in different formats so in this case, 
I want the full ABV detail. It's just sent that in a matter of seconds. It's just sent that to my computer and then bang. So what we've got now is that group of bulls that we've just looked at and I've sorted from data that and that's now put that group of bulls into uh, a particular spreadsheet for us. Pete, we've got a question. Yep. Um, does the genetic traits such as poll directly populate from the genotype or are they manually added by the owner? Uh, they're manually added by the owner. Yes. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're actually manually added. So each bull company is responsible to, uh, to manually add that. Okay, so that's, if you want to export, that's, that's a really useful function. So if we come back to, um, to the animal search now, what we also load into the public section of, of data that uh, is the ability to look at our top cows. These are our top genomically tested cows in amongst the two genomic breeds. So we've got, we've just, set the selection for Holstein or cows, looking at Holstein cows. And what we see is very similar to the bulls. We actually see the top ranked cows in April. Uh, and these are the genomic tested females. So same thing, you can actually look at the cow information. So we're just looking at our number one cow here. And you can see all her particular details. And likewise, you've got all those same buttons where you can compare. In this case, the cow actually came up. She lifted her production. She came up 35 production points and overall um, 38 BPI points. So Pete, you can't see every cow that's heard recorded there, can you? Not, not here. This is actually the top genomically tested. So they have to be genomically tested to make this list. Uh, but what, what breeders can do, we're, we're now um, opening up our database uh, as herd owners. They can actually log in as individual herd owners and we show them all of their cows. So uh, uh, this list here is just the public release list. But if you log in as a, as a herd owner, uh, you actually get to see all of your cows individually. Um, and, we're, we're, sorry, we're just about on our half hour time. Yep. Um, and so that's, that's basically the cows. Uh, the other reports and tools, uh, and we're populating that as we go. So I've come across the reports and tools. What you'll find useful, particularly the industry people, we, we keep our NASIS files here. So if you're wanting to download, and that's updated every week, uh, if you want to download the most recent NASIS file in different formats, you can also access it through reports and tools and, uh, and NASIS tools. So there's, there's quite a few things that we'll be actually adding to this uh, now that we're here. And also uh, a very useful thing for the farmers is that uh, uh, we've got a, a genomic value tool that we've kept there. So if you've got, say, 100 heifer calves and you're looking to keep 75 of those and your replacement rate's 25%, uh, it will actually calculate the benefit um, across testing those heifers genomically. So really, um, data fat, in summary, it's just a fantastic way of delivering uh, the most updated and accurate ABV information uh, to all of our data gene stakeholders. Uh, that includes our farmers, our, their farm advisors, herd improvement people, and AI industry people that, uh, like Bruce, um, use it on a very regular basis. It, it allows us to deliver the information in a timely manner to a large number of people. Uh, and as we move to more frequent runs, uh, we're at, at the position where we can um, deliver that information basically as we've uh, uh, calculated or each run. 
So it's rightly quoted, uh, I think, in industry that um, you can't improve something you don't measure. Uh, what data that? It gives you the ability to, uh, uh, obviously, through testing, uh, to show that information in, in the quickest and most efficient way uh, and then allow farmers and industry people to select the bulls they wish to select and also the cows they wish to keep. So it's simple, it's easy to use. Uh, if you have any um, challenges, certainly feel free to contact us, uh, myself, M Michelle, or our um, uh, data gene team. But certainly there's a lot of people quite familiar with data that now that can help you out as well. So it's available on the web 24-7, uh, so seven days a week, 24 hours, and uh, um, it's a fantastic industry resource. So, so with that, we, Leanne, have we got any um, particular questions? We haven't got any more questions in the chat, but if people would like to manually unmute their microphone, um, we've got a few minutes for questions, or okay. while they're doing that, maybe Bruce might like to give us his, his most used um, functions on DataVat. Uh, I was going to say, Pete, um, one thing you, uh, if you go to uh, animal search um, and the screen comes up with uh, the options of the bulls below, if you click on the columns section, uh, mm -hmm. so you've got 10 and you've got columns. Can you see that, Pete, up a little bit? Yep. Um, you do have the ability to add new tabs, uh, more information and remove information. So sometimes uh, removing the sire or the dam off the screen um, and adding in some other features. I think it's got health weighted index you can put on that screen as well. So um, I've found that quite useful as, a, as an extra tool. Uh, and then increasing the, the number of bulls you can show on the screen from 10 to 100 um, is also something I use quite regularly. So. Um, and then just scroll down the page and you can actually look at all your all the bulls together. Also, if you, you click on the top of the column, you can sort it how you wish to sort it as well. Yep. And for those that um, we actually indicate the good bulls, so the bulls with nose rings are actually the bulls that are uh, uh, part of the Good Bulls Guide or the Good Bulls app. Uh, so for instance, this bull here, even though he's a high ranking BPI bull, he doesn't have a Good Bulls Guide logo yet. Um, it's because he's a younger bull. So he's actually didn't qualify at that stage, but he will for the next run. So it really shows you the bulls that are available as well. Okay, well, with that, Leanne, um, any other comments, Bruce? Um, it's just that um, the more you use it, the easier it gets, I think, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So we will send a follow-up email, which will have a link to some user instructions and a fact sheet um, and, the, and our sort of um, help services. But certainly, if you need help with it, um, yeah, we're, we're more than happy to uh, um, to help you steer through. And uh, it's a database. The information's there. You, you've just got to set your criteria to find exactly what you want. So with that, Leanne, I think we thank everybody for participating. And certainly, if you'd like to go back over uh, our more recent webinars, um, part of our invitation today, there's links to some of the earlier webinars uh, on the tight composites. And likewise, um, there'll be a link to the um, data that demonstration that we've done today. So thank you very much. Um, and um, yeah, we look forward to the proofs coming out in uh, a week and a half's time. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye.